Good morning, y'all. It's a very chilly day uh, this morning in Georgia. We're down in the low 40s tonight, expecting to go down to the 30s. So hopefully it won't be freezing, but uh, anyhow, it's kind of early to be getting so chilly. I do not like cold weather. That's why I live in the South. But anyhow, because it's chilly, I thought I'd make a, a beef stew today. So what I've done is Bob had found a tri-tip roast. He likes to cook those on the grill. Um, and it's a really good size one. So I decided I would sneak off part of it and use it in my beef stew. The problem with the tri-tip is they have a lot of fat. You see that big chunk of fat there? So um, the slices I've sliced off here, I've cut the fat off because it's got some pretty marbling in there anyhow. So it's not like it's gonna, um, you know, be all dried out. It'll have some marbling in there. So I'm gonna chop those up. Put this over here. Um, I'm gonna chop these up into small pieces and then um, cook them over here. I've got some olive oil and a skillet just to brown them a little bit before I put them in the stew. Um, and what I've already put in the stew, and, and this is over here in my crock pot, is I put um, a carton of beef broth, and I put a can of diced tomatoes and a can of green beans. Um, and then I went ahead and sliced up and chopped up a, um, an onion. And so all that's already in the crock pot getting warm. I'm gonna cook, um, brown this meat, and then I've got some potatoes and carrots I'm going to peel and slice and put in there. So that should just about do it, but we'll taste it and see how it, uh, how it does. So let me get this started, and I'll get right back with you. Okay, I'm back. I've got the meat all cut up into little bite-sized pieces. You can see just tiny pieces, and I'm putting them on over here in this skillet and going to... Um, brown them on all sides, and then put them right over in the crock pot. I'll get back with you in just a few minutes. Okay, the meat is brown, and it's about to go in the crock pot. So the next thing, though, I wanted to show you is I went ahead and started cooking up, uh, I mean, cutting up the carrots. So I just peeled some carrots, and then I sliced them at an angle like that, so that I get pretty little discs like this. They're about a quarter of an inch thick. So I like them where it's not exactly round, but at that angle. I just think, I just like them that way. Sorry, I don't know why. Uh, I think they look fancier for a plain old stew. But, and then I'll just uh, peel now uh, the potatoes and chop them up into little cubes and put them in too. So I'll be back with you in just a little bit. Okay, I'm back. I took some red potatoes. You could use the Yukon Gold potatoes. They're really uh, good in stew as well. Um, I had some, but they had gone bad in the refrigerator. So um, I found these red ones in there and they'll do just as well. So I went ahead and peeled them and I've cut them up into little cubes so you can see they're just tiny little cubes um, so I'm still in the process of cutting those up I also found some okra that uh, came from our garden that was up in the um, in the refrigerator so I'm going to chop that up and just add a few pods of this okra just to um, add a little more flavor to the stew and of course then we're going to taste the stew and make sure that um, you know, if we need to add other liquids like maybe Worcestershire sauce or, um, <clears throat> or add um, maybe some Heinz 57 or, or maybe another can of tomatoes, we'll, we'll know after, we, um, after I taste it. So anyhow, I'll get back with you in just a little bit. Okay, I'm back and now it's the fun part. Now we're adding different flavors into the stew. So I tasted it with a, a, just a little bit of the juice and of course that's not the full flavor because all the vegetables hadn't cooked into it yet but still gives me a pretty good idea 
and I just think it needs a little more of the tomato flavor. So I've got another can of tomatoes I'm just gonna pour right in here. These are just the diced tomatoes. I am going to add a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I'm also going to add a little bit of Heinz 57. I know this is really unconventional, but I really like the flavor of it with meat, so I'm going to just put about a fourth of a cup of Heinz 57 in here. If you don't have that, I guess you could use any steak sauce, but I just love the flavor of this one. All right, stir that in real good. Now I want to add some herbs in here. So anytime I make any kind of soup or stew, I usually add a bay leaf. So I've got a bay leaf I'm gonna just stick down in there. And then I went out to my herb garden because who knows if they're gonna survive all this cold weather. So I went ahead and picked some sage and some rosemary and some basil. So I'm gonna chop these up with scissors and, um, and just put them, stir them right in to the stew. And that is gonna be it. I'll, I'll taste it again later after it's cooked a little bit and see if it needs some more salt and pepper. I did salt and pepper and put garlic powder on the meat when it was cooking. I forgot to tell y'all that, but anyhow. So there is some salt from that. Plus there's salt in the canned um, vegetables that I put in here. So. I'll get back with you a little later today when it starts getting closer to ready. All right, y'all, it's been about four hours on high. The crock pot's been going and the stew is ready. Oh my gosh, it smells wonderful and it looks beautiful. I don't know if you can see this, but look at that. The potatoes are nice and tender. So I'm gonna taste it now. I've, I dipped some out a little bit ago so I could let it cool off. <clears throat> I just wanna taste and make sure that the flavor is good. Mm. It is definitely good. Now I'm gonna see if this meat got good and tender. Mm. You know, it held its shape in the little cubes, but the minute you put it in your mouth, it just falls apart. Very tender, very delicious. The herbs, I can taste that rosemary and the sage and uh, the basil is just wonderful. The only thing I think it needs is I think it needs to be a little, I like a little bit thicker juice than this. This is just more like a soup and I want it to be more like a stew. So I've taken a, ta a big heaping tablespoon of flour, and I think this is self-rising flour, but you could probably use either one. And I'm just gonna stir in a little bit of wa water. This is just cold water. I'll stir it with a fork. Try to make sure there's no lumps in here. And then I'll just gradually add this into the stew here. Still had a few little lumps. I used my little whisk. Those lumps will, will cook out, but I just don't like seeing them in there. just thicken this juice up a little bit. Not a tremendous amount. But if I wanted it thicker, I'd just add more flour and water. Or you could use cornstarch if you prefer the cornstarch. Um, either one works great. I've used both. I don't 
really have a preference to one or the other. Anyhow, this will cook and you can see it's already a little bit thicker. I think you might can see that. Um, but as it cooks, it'll thicken up more. Anyhow, Bob has run out to get a haircut and while he's getting his haircut, which is right next to the grocery store, I asked him to please pick up some buttermilk so we can have some buttermilk cornbread to go with this stew tonight. I think that'll be a nice warm dinner on a very cool night. Hope you're staying warm, and I hope you're getting ready and excited for fall. Um, it's a beautiful time of year. Anyhow, I love you all, and I'll catch you on the next one.